Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.7, graphing trigonomic functions. Here we go with amplitude. Amplitude is half the difference between the maximum and the minimum values of the function. So we're talking amplitude here. Here's the top, the maximum part. Here is the minimum value. Now it's half the value. What does half mean? That's divided by 2. So negative 2 to 2 is 4. We divide that by 2 because we're talking half, so our amplitude is... Two. Or if we're looking here from our x-axis or from theta, it goes up to here. We're talking just from the theta axis or x-axis all the way up to here, which would be 2. Remember from last section now, our period is a horizontal length of one cycle. So where does it start to repeat? It goes down and then back up to this point and then down and back up so it repeats at 4 with period we are looking at our x-axis so it is 4 this graph has a period of 4 now we're going to look at the sine and cosine graphs the sine graph is in red and it follows the top of the curve goes up to 1 at 90 degrees and goes through 180 and then the graph of cosine theta starts at 1 and goes through 90 and goes down at 180 and then repeats at 360. Both sine and cosine repeat at 360. Now if we look at tan of theta or our tangent graph here, we have a tangent which goes through 0 and then up. These red dotted lines are asymptotes. If we remember what asymptotes are, that means the graph gets very, very close to these lines but never passes. So as this line keeps going up, it gets closer and closer and closer, never crosses this line right here, and it goes on and on forever. So if we look at these graphs, we can tell what? That the sine and cosine functions are periodic functions. So for the sine and cosine functions of this form, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have A. This A would be multiplied to both sine and cosine, and then this B is behind, this B is behind the cosine and sine functions being multiplied to theta. We can get our amplitude and period from both of these functions. Our amplitude is what's going to be in front of the sine and cosine function, right? The amplitude is the absolute value of A or what number in front of the sine and cosine functions. Now the period though comes from what's behind the sine and cosine function. The period also is the absolute value but if you're looking at degrees, so if this B is the degree measure here and here are degree measures, we go 360 divided by the degree measure. Or if it has a pi attached to it, we are going to use 2 pi divided by the absolute value of B. So let's take a look. Here we are asked to find the amplitude and period of each function. Well, here we have the sine function. The amplitude, remember, if we look at it, is the absolute value of A and A is in front. Is there a value right there? There isn't, but there's just one sign, so we're going to take the absolute value of this 1, and absolute value of 1 is 1. Now the period, we have 1 third. There is no pi, so we are going to use degrees. So it's 360 divided by here, 1 third. You punch that into your calculator we get 1,080 degrees. Same thing for number two. Now we have the cosine function, but it doesn't change our A. What is our amplitude? It's being multiplied to the cosine, so our amplitude is right here. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that it's the absolute value of A, so that's absolute value of negative three, which is three. And then the period is behind the cosine function. The period is right there. Again, we're going to keep that degrees, so it's 360 divided by the absolute value of 6, which turns out to be 60 degrees. Next, we have frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles in a given unit of time. It is also the reciprocal of the period. So what kind of problems do these look like? For three, we have humans can hear sounds with a frequency of 40 hertz. 
Now we are asked, find the period of the function that models the sound waves, where we're looking for the period. If the frequency is reciprocal of period, period must be a reciprocal of frequency. So that is just going to be 1 over 40, because 1 40th is the reciprocal of 40. Or you could have, you could actually divide it out and have 0 0.025. And what's our time period that we're talking about? We are talking about seconds. Now part B. Let the amplitude be two units, so there's our amplitude. Write a sine equation to represent the sound wave W as a function of time. So first thing we have to do is find our period if we want to write a function. So our period here is 360 over B or 2 pi over B. Well, what is our period? If we go up here, our period is 1 40th. And I'm going to use pi just to change things up a little bit. So I'm going to find my period first. Now my period is going to be 2 divided by 1 40th. And that's going to give me 80. And then what is my amplitude? My amplitude is stated as 2 units. So now I use this stuff to plug in for my equation. So my final equation, or my function, my sound wave, W, equals, what is my A? My A is my amplitude. My amplitude is 2, so it's 2 times sine. What is my B? 80, I used radian, so I have to include a pi. And then I also have to include, write a function of t times, so it's going to be taken times t right here. So here is my function. And then a couple quick things here. Tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent do not have amplitudes. Why is that? Because if you look at your tangent function, it goes on and on and on and on and up and up and up. So therefore, it cannot have an amplitude because you do not know where it ends. Also, the cosecant, secant, and cotangent do the same exact thing. They go up and up and up and down and down and down forever, so they cannot have an amplitude. Those graphs, those parent graphs, can be found on page 840. But we do have the period of tangent and cotangent. Now, instead of 360, 360 degrees, it is just 180. So it's 180 degrees divided by your B, or what's behind your trig function. Same thing with pi since it was 2 pi for sine and cosine. Now it's just pi for tangent and cotangent. Cosecant and secant you can still find the period by going 360 divided by b or 2 pi divided by b. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 12.7, graphing trigonomic functions. Good day!